Hello, my name is Ben Eisenbach. I'm excited to present our work entitled Inference via Interpolation. Contrastive representations provably enable planning and inference. This is joint work with Vivek Myers, Ruslan Salkutinov, and Sergey Levin. The problem that we look at in this paper is inference with high dimensional time series data. To start, I want to give you a flavor of what these data look like. Let's imagine we have this robot here, and we put it in a scene that looks like this. And we collect data, images, videos. Now, with these videos, there's several questions that you might try to answer, inference questions. One question is trying to predict or forecast the future. This problem is important for several control applications, but it's also very challenging because these data, these images are really high dimensional. Another problem you might try to answer with these data is planning or in-painting. Given an observation and some future observation, what do those intermediate observations look like? This problem, again, is really challenging because the data are so high dimensional, but it's also really important for various applications in planning and control. The key idea in this paper is to try to learn low dimensional compact representations that enable the sort of inference. Now, you might be wondering, doesn't a sequential VAE already do this? And it does, but it requires reconstruction. It requires learning how to map these low dimensional representations back to high dimensional data. And so in this paper, we're trying to figure out, is there a way of learning these representations without reconstruction? The key approach that we analyze is temporal contrastive learning, an approach that's been pioneered in other fields. This approach works as follows. You start by taking time series data and embedding your data points in some representation space, such that data points that occur nearby in time are given nearby representations. Importantly, these contrastive learning methods don't require reconstruction. That makes them a lot easier to apply to high dimensional data. Now, the main theoretical result of our paper is that this temporal contrastive learning method, it ends up learning representations that are distributed according to a Gaussian Markov chain. Now, this Gaussian Markov chain is just a really fancy way of saying that they have a nice distribution. Given these representations, we can then solve problems about prediction and planning simply by inverting a low dimensional matrix. Our results have several implications. One is that they help explain results from prior work. Prior work led by Chong Yi Zhang at last year's iClear found that when you do temporal contrastive learning, you end up learning representations where you can do planning just by interpolating between the representations. And what our theoretical results show is that that wasn't just a fluke, but it's actually something that you expect to happen. We can compare these temporal contrastive learning methods to alternative representation learning methods. And in our paper, one setting where we did this was on this hammer task. When we compare our method to two alternatives, one being PCA, another being value implicit pre-training, we find that our theoretical results allow us to much more accurately predict what those intermediate states will look like. For visualization purposes here, we're just plotting a two-dimensional version of the states computed using TSNE. And quantitatively, our method is much better at predicting these intermediate states. Another application of our theoretical results is to planning. Let's say you want to solve this maze shown on the left, and you have lots of data of an agent wandering through this maze. Our results say that you can simply take a representation of the initial state and a representation of the goal state, and then use our results, invert a low-dimensional matrix, to infer what the representations of all these intermediate states are. After you've found these intermediate states, you can use them for planning, laying down a string of breadcrumbs leading to the goal. And empirically, this leads to much higher success rates for navigation, especially on the most challenging navigation tasks. So in conclusion, the main takeaway from this paper is that temporal contrastive learning is a simple way of doing prediction and forecasting, of doing planning and in-painting. It has some theoretical backing, and it doesn't require reconstruction, making it very scalable. Another way of seeing this paper is that it's about how to get the benefits of a sequential VAE without needing to do reconstruction. Now, there's several directions that we're excited to look at in future work. One is to understand and ensure the assumptions behind our work. Like all theoretical work, our results make certain assumptions, and we're happy to chat more about them at the poster session. Another future direction is understanding the potential applications of these methods. Where is planning used today? And where can we drop in these temporal contrastive learning methods to enable more scalable planning?
please drop by the poster to learn more and chat more. We'd love to collaborate with you on these future directions. Thanks.